Joining us now to talk about the tech sector and California's economic recovery is Gavin Newsom, former mayor of San Francisco and now lieutenant governor of the state of California. You said I could call you Gavin. So Please call me Gavin. Gavin, welcome I to said Bloomberg I, I'm West. I'm called everything. I'm in politics, so trust it's, me. It's great to have you here. Good to be here. You know, there's a lot of ways that we could slice and dice these numbers. Yeah. According to one federal statistic, California came in last in March in terms of non-farm payroll jobs. Yeah. Can California innovate itself out of this job well, crisis? No, no doubt about it. Look, the tech sector has been one of the few bright spots. And let me be candid. I mean, I'm the chair of the Economic Development Commission in this state. This is a state with unemployment still north of 12 percent. California has 26 counties with unemployment north of 15 percent, seven counties with unemployment north of 20 percent. These are depression era unemployment numbers. We were hit hard by the foreclosure crisis and the housing crisis. And we're now beginning finally, and you saw in those stats the first quarter, we're finally starting to see that turnaround driven by these innovative companies, familiar ones like Facebook, familiar ones obviously uh, like Twitter and Zynga, but some smaller companies like Yelp and uh, companies that really are beginning to emerge that are going from 30 folks to 150 to 300 folks. And really that's going to be uh, the recovery uh, that this state needs is really going to be in that sector and the green tech sector. What about the notion, though, that technology doesn't just create jobs, but it actually eliminates jobs as well. Well, I mean, more efficiency, higher productivity, but at the end of the day, I think it's limitless. It's the quality of imagination, uh, social networking, social media, the ability for people to connect uh, across their differences and using technology as a way of creating residual jobs. I mean, it's not manufacturing where you have the highest sort of uh, multiplier, uh, but you do have remarkable downstream uh, multiplication in terms of job creation. We're seeing that just in the tech sector of San Francisco that south of market area. You're seeing all this other businesses start to come around in the area and support uh, those businesses and they're being created. I mean, tw the big news in San Francisco was Twitter getting a tax break. Businesses are looking uh, for competitive environments, looking for quality of space. You can never deny uh, that quality of life issue, uh, but they're also looking uh, for cities to be more competitive and San Francisco is getting back yeah. into the competitiveness game. We're not just a high tax city anymore. Gavin. Gavin, let me ask you about the, the sort of disruptive nature of technology uh, employment, though. Does it change the role of government? Because technology is such a disruptive factor, people are not in jobs for a lifetime. They have more time between jobs in the course of their lifetime. Does government's role in helping people through cycles of employment uh, increase? Or does more the government has to do? And is that a permanent change as technology is a permanent part of our economy? Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, we have to be more nimble. Workforce training is an obvious component. We've got to make sure that we're aligning with any economic development strategy, a workforce development strategy, recognizing the fact that people are going to have 15, 20 different jobs over the course of their uh, careers. And so I think that's the biggest challenge right now. Uh, the biggest disruption in this state right now is the inability for us to reconcile our budget deficits in this new growing economy where we're actually Wait, no longer so able to train the engineers and the scientists like we were in the past because of well, the yeah, let me, let me jump in. Are you saying so? It sounds like what you're saying is that there's a bigger role in the future. There has to be more job training in the future of this country, in the future of this state, than there has been in the past. I think there's no doubt we've got to be more nimble and we've got to be more entrepreneurial in terms of our approach and we've got to reconcile the changing realities in terms of the private sector, in terms of the way the public adopts and reacts, particularly as it relates to our educational and workforce training framework. Absolutely. Let's talk about keeping top talent in California. The UC system just went through some yeah. major budget cuts. That was actually a big feeder for some of these top tech companies. How do you make sure that the best minds stay in the state? That's my biggest concern. I mean, the one thing I'm hearing from the Zingas and from the Twitters, we have Salesforce.com out here, which is growing exponentially, cloud computing, et cetera, is the competition for talent. And you're starting to see that not just in the salaries, but the perks that are being offered by these companies. At the end of the day, it comes to how we can out-educate, as the president said, so we can out-compete. You're, you're talking about the UC system, but also our California State University system and our community college system have had some very difficult budgets over the last few years. Tuitions and fees have gone up. So we've got to reconcile that in terms of what we value and what we prioritize in terms of subsequent budget decisions. And how about immigration policy as well? I mean, that's Critical. another big beef. And I'll CEOs be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated as a Democrat. Executives. The H-1B uh, v, uh, visa issue keeps getting caught. I mean, there's the votes for that right away, but they're linking that to comprehensive immigration reform. So we actually have something we can actually reform so that we can recruit people from around the world and keep them here. But because of politics, that's being caught up uh, in the 
broader immigration debate. So that plays a huge role, of course. I want to ask you a quick question. You're writing a book yeah. about social media. How effective have you found social media to be in building a constituency, and does it actually translate into votes? It translates into votes, but we've been wildly ineffective in terms of our governance, and that's really the framework of the book. It's one thing to get elected and be able to use your tweets and use Twitter and connect with Facebook and get YouTube videos out there and engage folks to get them to the polls, but it seems right when the election's done, we're kind of done without, with the exception of a few perfunctory remarks and solicitations of feedback. And so I think uh, we have to look at government as a platform, uh, look at government as, a, as, as iPad uh, looks at the application and the development with data being mashed up by people and having people start designing government in their own image in a different way. It's about open data. It's about transparency. It's about a new connectivity. It's about taking all of that energy and connective tissue that exists in terms of the way people are already organized around LinkedIn and Facebook and these other mechanisms, uh, other social media networks, and now engage government and governance in the context of that same kind of passion and deliberative engagement. So that's, to me, a, a wellspring of opportunity for government in terms of being more nimble, entrepreneurial, driving down costs, and connecting people. You certainly have your work cut out for you. Look forward to seeing that book. Lieutenant Governor thanks. Gavin Newsom, thanks so much. Great to have you here, to be here. on Thank you. Bloomberg West.